Hey guys, welcome back to another watercolor tutorial video. In this summer series video, I'm going to show you how to create a couple tropical leaves without using a sketch. This one is super easy, and if you guys haven't checked out my other summer series videos, I definitely suggest you give them a try as well. They'll all be linked below. So jumping into this, I'm only gonna be using two colors. I have indigo and olive green. All supplies I use are always listed in the description below. The first leaf that I'm going to be creating is a monster leaf. And as I said, I'm not gonna be using a sketch. So I'm just gonna start directly on my paper using the wet on dry technique. So the wet equals the paint, the dry equals the paper. And we're just gonna dive right into it. I'm starting by using the tip of my brush and sort of sketching out this um, kind of oblong diamond shape at the top that's going to be the top of our leaf. And then at the bottom edge, I'm going to sort of loop that around and up into more of a rectangle shape. And then once again, at the bottom of that one, I'm going to loop it around and up into that beginning of a rectangle shape again. For the other side, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I want my rectangle shapes to sort of have a more tapered end, so it gets a little bit thinner the closer it gets to the center of the leaf. And I've just started creating the outlines and then using my brush, I can really gently go in and fill in some of that color. I did wanna leave a little bit of white space as well because that's just the style that I like doing. You don't have to do this, but yeah, that's just the style that I like. Um, I think it just adds a more sketchy sort of loose appearance. So as you complete each little leaf separation area, you're gonna to wanna to follow the shape of sort of like a teardrop. Basically the entire shape of the overall leaf is going to end up looking like this. So if you can keep that shape in mind as you're creating each little section of leaf area, whatever you wanna call it, um, that's really gonna help you sort of curve those edges around that shape as you go. And of course you want to make sure that the opposite side of the leaf is matched to the first side. So you kind of want them to be identical. The widths and the shapes of each little section does not have to be the same, but generally there should be the same number of splits in the leaf. And then keeping that teardrop shape in mind for the overall leaf, you're gonna start to reduce the size of each little section as you go down towards the bottom. I'm just dropping in a little bit more color here to fill out some of those areas, just a little bit more. And also this is gonna help keep the paint wet because we don't really want it to necessarily dry right away um, in case we want to add in a little bit more color to a wet on wet surface. So I just wanna keep that damp. So the bottom areas here are going to be a little bit smaller than the other leaf sections and curving down just a little bit. I actually found Monstera leaves to be a little bit difficult to draw from memory in the beginning because I wasn't sure where things went, but once I kind of started picturing the whole thing as that teardrop shape and then just visualizing where the leaf splits would go, it makes it so much easier. So I've just added in a small little thin stem using the tip of my brush. Now I'm taking a little bit of the indigo and I'm just putting that into different areas that I feel I want a little bit more color. I've also grabbed a more concentrated mix of the olive green. So I'm gonna be rotating between the indigo and the olive green and just really lightly stroking on some of the color to kind of make the effect that it's a little bit splotchy looking, not one solid color. And you can also see that because we kept that paint wet um, by adding in that sort of more wet solid layer, the colors that I'm adding now are able to blend out nicely. I'm trying to keep that very center area of the leaf blank um, and just have that lighter color show through because the stem is going to be a bit lighter colored and I don't want to mess that up. So that's kind of why I've just drawn in a vertical line along the center here and I'm just sort of making this really thin um, lighter line from the top of that diamond shape down to the stem area. You'll see as I continue what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so I've let that layer dry completely, and now I'm going to go in with a second layer because I want those veins on the leaf to appear now. So using the very tip of my brush again, this is a Wonder Forest watercolor brush. They have super pointy, razor sharp tips. I'm just going to use it to define that middle stem area. So I'm going to sort of push the color along each of these sections, but I'm gonna to try to avoid that very center area. It's just gonna be like a couple millimeters wide um, of this lighter stem area down the center of the leaf and as well as down each of the little sections. You'll see as I go along how I just leave that little bit of white space underneath. Also, please let me know what you guys want to see for the next couple of summer series videos. I know there have been a lot of suggestions for sort of ocean themed things like whales and narwhals and things like that. Um, I am a little hesitant to do videos like that because I actually have my watercolor with me in the ocean book coming out in November. And I don't know if it would be fair or if I'm allowed to post um, similar sort of paintings, if that makes sense. The link to pre-order that book is gonna be below as well, but that book, I mean, you guys are gonna love it, especially if you love ocean life and summery themed things, that book is going to be amazing for you. I'm so proud of it. So if you want more of these, um, definitely check that out. So you can see that I have left some of those little white space areas that I had put in on the first layer. And I really like how those look. It kind of acts as a little bit of a highlight. So you can see better now what I was talking about by leaving that little bit of very small, um, couple millimeter size stem veins in each of the little sections. And as we go down with the main vertical stem, we just want that white space to match up with the little stem sticking out of the bottom. I'm just gonna touch up a couple of the areas again with just a little bit of a darker concentration of that green. So here is my finished monster leaf. I'm now gonna show you guys how to create another leaf to kind of pull this piece together. Just because when I painted this, it was sort of off center and that really bothers me. So I wanted to create something to sort of balance it out. So to make this a little bit easier, I have rotated my paper upside down and I'm just mixing up a little bit of indigo with that same sap, um, olive green color. And I'm just deciding where I want this leaf to go and how I want it to sort of wrap around the other one. So using the tip of my brush, I'm just gonna lightly sort of map out where I want the leaf to go. Nothing's too permanent. Um, I just wanted a bit of a guideline. And as always, I'm just using that classic leaf technique where you start with the tip of your brush, push down on the belly of the brush and then back to the tip and I'm going to alternate sides. So for the position of this one, I wanted it to look like it was kind of behind the other leaf and kind of wrapping around. So I wanted the leaf shapes to flow with the whole rounded um, kind of composition. So you'll notice that the leaves, as I start going down, they're gonna be angled upwards and a little bit more to the right. And I'm making sure to leave plenty of space in between the leaves because I am gonna be going back in with another layer and I want enough space in between these to add additional leaves. So with the top of this layer pretty much dry, I'm gonna go back in now with another layer and I'm gonna fill in some of those blank spaces that I left previously. And I'm gonna to try to vary my color just a little bit. So I might add a little bit more of the indigo. I might use a little bit more green just depending on where the next leaf is gonna go. I want it to kind of stand out from the one that it's overlapping.
I'm just gonna speed this up a little bit now, but definitely feel free to take your time with these. You don't have to rush when you're creating these leaves. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to get the pressure right from the tip to the belly of your brush, so just practice with that. Now I'm just going to go in and darken some of the bases of those leaves and the stem a little bit more just by adding in a little bit more of the same color. So this is pretty much what we're left with. I hope that you guys liked the tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It does help out the channel a lot. Also, if you create this, tag me on Instagram. I would love to see your work. I'm going to be posting even more summer series videos over on my Patreon page, so click the link on the end screen if you want to join. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.